hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com my name is jason newland this is relax and sleep hypnosis daily please only listen when you can safely close your eyes I'm recording this in the afternoon, so there may be the odd little background sound. Uh, there's a pigeon, Horace the Pigeon's in the garden. And there's a, a fly's come in the window. So I've closed the windows, but the fly can't get out again. So she might be buzzing around. Her name's Penelope. So hopefully Penelope will calm down a little, a little while and... Maybe just go and have a little sleep on on the table or something. So, I haven't made one of these for a little while, so I'd like to apologise. Uh, the reason is, there's a few different reasons. <laughs> no decent excuses, I'm afraid. However, I am planning to be getting back to making them regularly so maybe we should just go through a nice little body scan just to get in touch with how we feel so if you get yourself comfortable lying either on your bed or sitting down in a comfortable chair one that supports your body and remembering that you know you can listen to this either just for relaxation or you may choose to be listening so that you can drift off to sleep whichever you choose is up to you if you are listening just for the relaxation then it may be worth setting your alarm just in case you fall asleep you know if you have other things to do in a an hour or two you know you may want to set your alarm to wake yourself up and if you are listening solely for relaxation you're probably better listening sitting in a chair because if you lie down there's the chances of staying awake are quite slim because well, you've got the reason, you know, you're in a, in a bed. We have that association between lying down on your bed and falling asleep. Then there's the lying down and relaxing deeply, which is something that definitely would lead to drifting off to sleep. Then there's my, <laughs> my boring voice droning on in the background which, you know, is very likely just to bore your mind into almost a submission to just let go and give up trying to be active because the more you listen to me, the slower your mind becomes. Those thoughts that were there before that may even have seemed important start to just fall away almost falling on the floor it's as if the the foundations to those thoughts start to crumble like a sinkhole kind of opens up and they just disappear because they're just thoughts even if it's thoughts about something that's really important to you. You don't need those thoughts at the moment. And those thoughts disappearing down that sinkhole makes no difference to uh, how you'll be when you finish the recording in a sense of the things that are important to you, really important to you before, will be just as important it's just while you're listening to me 
everything starts to be less relevant. Things that, you know, are genuinely important to you in your life just seem to crumble those thoughts those maybe sometimes racing thoughts sometimes inappropriate thoughts maybe helpful thoughts but the helpful thoughts will still be there when we finish in fact what you may find is when you start to Allow your thoughts, your worries, your concerns, your stresses, tension, uh, any kind of anxiety and stress. When you allow all of that stuff to just go and disappear in that sinkhole. What you're left with is a new opportunity. It's almost as if the the thoughts were decorating your mind, almost like the thoughts were the furniture. So now that all that furniture's gone, you can choose what furniture to put back. You can choose to have more positive thoughts in your mind. To focus more on positive ideas. As opposed to either focusing on the negative ones. Or just allowing your mind to have free reign. And just letting everything in. Almost as if you're stuck in a movie that you don't want to watch. And you can't get out and, you know, maybe it's like a really bad date. And you're just stuck watching this film. You don't want to watch it anymore. You perhaps you didn't want to watch it to start with. Well, this is your opportunity to remove yourself, not just from the movie, but to demolish the theatre. Demolish the whole building where the movie was being played. Get rid of every copy of that movie. And just drop it into a volcano. Just let it all go. Because in your mind... You don't have to hold on to anything. Because it's your mind. It belongs to you. Only you. Have the power. And the knowledge. To make those changes that you decide to make. No one else can do it for you. Because no one else knows what you need. You know. You know that focusing on positive things makes you feel happier. Makes you feel more positive for the future and more motivated to do those things that need to be done in order for you to move forward in your life. To have the things you want. To enjoy the life that you deserve. To experience more pleasure, happiness, contentment and deep relaxation. By allowing those positive thoughts to spring up into your mind to grow 
And sometimes it can seem like you're rebuilding your mind. And every brick that's building your mind is made of positivity, positive bricks. Like a room, you've got positive bricks, positive plaster on the walls, positive skirting boards, positive flooring, positive carpet. Everything has that positive energy mixed in. And you know, positivity is kryptonite to negativity. It's impossible to hold both a positive and a negative thought at the same time, in the same instant. Which means you choose. You choose. Continuously what you do next. And what you think next. And you're no longer being held hostage in a theatre, a cinema, being stuck watching a movie you don't want to watch. When actually you never have been hostage because you could always walk out. But maybe you didn't realise. And sometimes I know it can feel like that, can't it? It can feel a bit like you're mind is this movie theatre and it just maybe keeps playing over and over again uh, clips of a movie that you don't want to watch anymore maybe showing you things from the past uh, that you don't really want to view you don't want to see it anymore you don't want to experience those feelings anymore you've learnt from the experience whatever there was to learn maybe the only thing to learn was that you didn't like it and you don't want it to happen again and you do whatever it takes to ensure that it doesn't happen again which means you don't need to see that movie anymore It can be destroyed or maybe just archived. Stick it in the pile of movies that you're never going to watch again. Just like an album, a CD. I know that lots of things now are streaming online, but we all remember CDs, DVDs. Maybe video games. And there's always those that we listened to or watched or played with regularly. Our favourite album, maybe. And then there was those that you maybe listened to it once and thought, oh, no, don't really like it. You may have liked one song that was in the charts, bought the album and didn't really enjoy the album and got fed up with this, the one song you did like. And that went on the pile or on the rack with a few others that you didn't get rid of because you might listen to it one day. But you probably won't. Or a movie that you've seen. That you really thought. Oh I look forward to watching this. But once you've seen it. You've seen it. And maybe you'll never watch it again. As part of your DVD collection. So it might look nice on the rack. On the pile of DVDs I used to love having DVDs of stand up comedy shows 
live stand-up comedy shows. I had loads. I used to like just looking at them. But then I realised one day that I wasn't watching them. I'd seen them all. So sometimes, I guess, when you've got these old memories, they kind of been used up. They're really maybe of no use to you anymore. Perhaps they were once. Perhaps maybe you gained some kind of benefit from focusing on that event that happened. Maybe you felt there was some kind of usefulness focusing on that negativity. And maybe there was at the time. Maybe there was a positive outcome from that focusing. A learning that came from it. But now, as you move forward in your life, it's old. That memory is an old memory. It's the past. It's gone. And it's those thoughts connected to it just don't seem to fit anymore. There's no, maybe no positivity connected to that at all. And at the very least, at the very least, there needs to be a balance. Where there's negativity, there needs to be a balance of positivity. So every negative thought, you need a one positive thought at least in your mind. Again, not at the same time because they can't be at the same time. But maybe it could be an alternative. So when you think of that negative thought, you may decide as with your DVD collection or Netflix or wherever, you may decide to watch something different. In the same way as if someone had gone through a divorce and they kept watching the video of their wedding. Nothing positive is going to come out of that. All that's going to do is create more and more pain. I know that's obvious. But in some ways, isn't that what we all do? Maybe not, you know, a wedding video, but when it comes to thinking about things. How many of us focus on situations, regrets. The thing about a regret is you can't do anything about it. You can't do anything. Nothing you do will change what happened in the past. And it's natural to have regrets. I've got loads. Do we need to focus on them? If you think of regrets, like going to the toilet, you go to the toilet and you flush it away. That's a regret. Flush it away. It's of no use. Maybe we can learn from it. I guess if we have enough regrets, maybe we start to live our lives differently and maybe take some more chances 
and seize opportunities that come our way. Which means those previous regrets have led possibly to a much more positive life. And isn't that a wonderful thing really? If something positive comes out of it. And the reason I'm talking about thinking and positivity and negative thoughts is because the one thing that so many people have told me over the years, and I've been doing this, making podcasts uh, for about 16 years now online, since 2006. And overthinking It's usually called overthinking People express it that way Where they're thinking about things That they don't want to think about And it's not things that they're happy about Because one of the easiest ways to fall asleep is to actually focus on something wonderful. Focus on a really positive thing. Because what happens then is you start to drift. And you find yourself really getting tired. But you also want to, you're trying to stay awake almost because you want to, you want to focus on that positive feeling because it feels so good. But the more, of course, the more you try and stay awake, the more tired you get. But at the same time, because you're dreaming about this thing that you were thinking about, because you're daydreaming about it, which then maybe leads to dreaming, dreaming being asleep so it's this big positive feeling of comfort so what I'd like you to do now is to think of something something really nice Something really wonderful that you'd like to happen in your life and the people that maybe you'd help or what you would like to do, whether it was tr go traveling or uh, winning the lottery or all the people you could help with the money you won. Something like that. It could be anything. And just think about something and focus on that. And let your mind drift because your body is already deeply relaxed and your mind is already slowed down. And your mind really is now in tune with positivity, deeply in tune, just with the positive and the healing and just let your mind wander because daydreaming leads to sleep dreaming let your mind wander and drift Just think about that wonderful positive experience now. 